I can't imagine a day that it has meant more to me, and I know that's true of many of you, just so no one is under any illusions after that wonderful introduction and summary of some of my accomplishments, among 100 United States senators in seniority, I am number 97. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> Any day I get a chance to speak is a good day for me. <laughs> for those of you who think things are a little bit messy in Washington, I can tell you that I'm always happy to be out of Washington. I'm always happy to be in Hartford. I'm always happy to be at the University of Hartford, one of the great learning institutions and educational establishments in the United States of America. You should be proud, every one of you. And I am especially proud to accept this honorary degree from my good friend, Curtis Robinson, who has given relentlessly and tirelessly to the University of Hartford and to all of Connecticut with his efforts on behalf of public health and education, and also to receive this degree from Walter Harrison, a leader in American education unmatched in his dedication and his drive to improve the excellence of our learning institutions throughout America. Thank you, Walter Harrison. Now, I want to give a special congratulations to this class and especially to the students who attended and worked here while holding part or full-time jobs, while caring for their parents or their children, students who overcame odds and are here because they were determined to graduate and then to give back. And before we give you the keys to the car, so to speak, I'm going to ask you to make a promise, enter a compact that generation after generation has done in this country since its very founding. And that is to leave the nation a little bit better than you found it. My parents, many of your grandparents, defeated fascism in Europe, came back to build an interstate highway system, break down racial and religious barriers, and launch a space program, all of it leaving America better. That is what my generation should do for you. And one of the worries, one of the risks of my generation is our fear that perhaps we will not leave this nation better for you for the first time in our history, that we may not leave the nation better than we found it. But we have that responsibility. It is a shared responsibility. And there is still unfinished business that we have a shared responsibility to accomplish. That is what it means to be a citizen to engage in that compact, to keep that promise. Two stories, I think, illustrate this point. One is about a man named Eduardo Saverin, who came to this country when he was 13 from Brazil, where his life was threatened. He came to this country not only for the freedom and security, but also for the opportunity. And this country did well by him. He may be known to you as one of the co-founders of Facebook, whose stock as of Friday is in the billions of dollars. And Eduardo Saverin now is a billionaire three times over. But we also learned about Eduardo Saverin last week, that he has moved to Singapore. And he has renounced his American citizenship solely because he will thereby avoid literally 
millions of dollars, 67 million to be precise or more, in taxes that he will owe on the billions that he has realized as a result of the IPO last Friday of Facebook. He helped Mark Zuckerberg build Facebook, one of the great products, one of the great technologies, advancements in the history of our country. And this country helped him to do it. The other story is perhaps a more encouraging one. It is about Orlando Morrell, who, by the way, graduated from an institution here in Connecticut just a short time ago, Coast Guard Academy in New London. Orlando Morrell is a Haitian refugee. He came to this country at the age of six after leaving Haiti with his mother on a boat that drifted into the seas near the coast of Florida, where he was rescued. He and his mother both rescued, near starving, desperate for food and water, desperate for the United States. The Coast Guard rescued them off the coast of Florida, where they were completely adrift and desperate to be saved. After he arrived in the United States, his mother was diagnosed with cancer. And when he was near to seven years old, his mother passed away. And Orlando was raised by the translator who cared for both him and his mother while she was in the hospital, Louise Jackson. And in his sophomore year, Orlando decided he was going to go to the Coast Guard Academy so that he would help the organization that saved him at sea, and when he graduates, he will begin work on a cutter off the coast of Florida, where he will be defending against criminals and narcotics smugglers and others who would do the United States harm, including terrorists. And he will no doubt encounter others who are refugees, like he was, adrift at sea. Orlando decided to stick around, to stick around, make a difference, keep the compact, fulfill the promise, give back, and make a difference in the United States of America. And the good news is there are so many more people like him than there are like Eduardo Saverin, who renounced his citizenship so that he would not be bound by any of those promises, any of those obligations, not just in monetary terms, but in the compact of shared responsibility. Citizenship means more than just the title, means more than just physically being here or sticking around. It means emotionally committing with the passion and perseverance that is demonstrated day in and day out by many in this audience, many on this platform, by people like Brittany Wallace, who has given to Food Share and her community in Windsor and whom we have honored today, people like Curtis Robinson, who has given to the University of Hartford and the State of Connecticut and St. Francis Hospital, people like Catherine Black and Elizabeth Park, who have given to this institution, but also to their communities. Everybody knows, as Bill Gates' father said, there is no such thing as a self-made man. We all stand on the shoulders of others. We all need a hand from time to time. That sense of community, which I can feel in this group right now, is one that makes America great. Just ask Nicole Sousa, who is here today with Edward Bell, about self-made people. She knows, every one of you knows, that you are here because of others. And that compact means that you give back to others after you. My generation still has 
some unfinished business, and we need to work on it before we can say we have given back. Many of you here today graduate with huge student debt, loans that you owe. The average in the state of Connecticut this spring, $25,000 per student, and many in this audience owe that much or more. That is a debt that inhibits risk-taking, entrepreneurship, job creation, innovating, creativity, the kind that build institutions big as Facebook, but small as the kinds of suppliers and entrepreneurs that we need here in the state of Connecticut to grow jobs. And we need, my generation, having asked yours to incur that debt, to find a way to alleviate and reduce and eliminate that debt. We need programs that will reduce and eliminate that debt, particularly for people who engage in community service like policing and nursing and doctoring and our military and all of those professions and activities that give back and keep the compact. And I can pledge to you, I'm going to work in the United States Senate for a program that reduces and eliminates debt in this country. My generation owes an unfil pro unfulfilled promise to our veterans. We have asked you to fight a war unprecedented in our history in length of time. Never have so few borne the burden for so long at such great cost to them individually. And yet, when they return, their rate of unemployment is double the general average. They are denied the rights to sufficient and adequate health care and jobs and opportunities, counseling and health care that they need and they deserve. And we must keep faith with our veterans. We can leave no veteran behind. And that is a pledge. That's a pledge we owe to every one of the 250,000 veterans, regardless of the war, regardless of their aid, and the 22 million in America. I'm going to just take a point of personal privilege. Would all the veterans who are here today please stand, please rise, so that we can acknowledge and thank you. Thank you for your service and welcome home. General David Petraeus spoke about your generation, about the young men and women in the military particularly, when he said of you that you are the next greatest generation of American leaders. He's right. And there are many challenges ahead. How to develop alternative sources of energy so we can save the nation and save the planet, how to provide better health care, and particularly to prevent the costly diseases that are within our control to stop, like tobacco addiction and obesity, how to provide skills and training, as this great institution does, so that we can match people with the jobs that exist and the jobs that we will create in the future. I don't doubt that my generation will leave a lot of unfinished business for these graduates and others this spring. But I also have no doubt that you will live up to this challenge, you will fulfill that compact, you will serve and give back, and you will stick around. And I am so proud to be with you today to join in this wonderful celebration of your citizenship, your accomplishments, and the great American promise that you begin 
to fulfill today. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you.